My plan was to go to the Elks Range. I was traveling solo and I knew in the forecast that the following day there was a big storm coming in late afternoon, but that's what I was shooting for was that early morning summit to avoid the big storm. By the time I had reached Crater Lake, the wind was starting to pick up a little bit. I dug my snow cave, uh, got settled in for the night, woke up early. The rocks were clear, so I popped on my mountaineering boots and hopped over to the rocks. I made quick time getting up to the ridge. The top, it was right there. It was 40, 50 feet away from me. I was really excited. Kind of a game changer to pull off that summit. And then all of a sudden, it was all going to hell. I must have stood on something that fumbled and broke. Before I knew it, the world turned upside down and, and I was falling. I knew how steep this thing was. Any one of those cliff drops, I thought inevitably I would die. That was a pretty low moment. Halfway down from the summit, I was able to slow myself to a stop. I had fallen about 1,500 to 2,000 feet. My leg was just destroyed. My elbow was out of its socket. My helmet had a large break in it. I was just spitting blood out in the snow. At that point, I, I didn't know. I didn't know what to do. I had my shovel, which was huge, but my phone screen flickered a little bit and then it died. I had lost my left glove and my pants are getting soaked. I was getting chilled pretty fast, so I sat on my shovel and kind of used it as a rudder and brake uh, to start scooting my way down and definitely afraid of, of what was to come. My biggest concern was the cold. I was shaking so violently. The longer I waited, I knew that I would just deteriorate. I decided, like, I'm, I'm getting out of here. If there's anybody that can survive being out there, Ryan could. But by Tuesday morning, I just had a hard time figuring out how that could be possible. I personally had, had given up hope. The snow was deep, so I had to move very slowly. I bit my fingers and I didn't feel a thing. Probably about after, I'd say, six hours, I found the trail. And it took three hours of walking on that trail before I heard somebody shouting. At about 4.20 it was, we got a call. And, and Dave turned to me and said, he's alive. I just started screaming for help. From the pit of the deepest grieving, to, I cannot believe what I just heard. 10 minutes later, search and rescue came rolling up down the road. I'll never forget the call. I have this guy, you're not gonna believe the story. He has survived something we've never seen anybody survive before. And there's no way I wasn't gonna get home and, and see my family again. Hi everybody, I'm alive.